Fighting Sail, Fleet Actions from 1775 to 1815 by Ryan Miller. Yeah, we're playing more Osprey Blue Book Series War Games. What can I say? I love them. I'm a fan. I ain't ashamed of it. Neither should you be. Kind of a light sailing game, just enough flavor to satisfy a noob like me. Great little measuring tools. Let's take a look at our fleets. Dressed today in stylish black and red, we have a British fleet that consists of a first raider and a third raider. Navigator rerolls sailing dice. Marksman rerolls his gunnery dice. Now, I'm not great at this. These are the second raiders. Got the multiple decks there. What a tumbling dice figures. These are fantastic. They're so great. They were so much fun to paint. The rat lines here are just simple gray with a nice dark wash on them. Uh, I actually wrote down on the bottom. Second raider, 100 guns. Third raider, 60 guns. Oh, no, I get the difference. They are going up against the Dutch. And here we have a Dutch first first raider with 130 guns. Compared to the third raider, that's what he looks like. And I wanted to show you just this is what the difference in sails. The kind of grayish white versus the yellowish white. Looking fancy, the Dutch here in the yellow trim. We're going to have this, like I said, first raider, and uh, he's going to be backed up by a fourth raider. The fourth raider looks a little bit bigger to my inexperienced eyes, but if you look at it from the side, you can see he covers a lot more real estate, but he's only a single decker, so he doesn't have nearly as many guns as this, this triple decker over here. So first rate, fourth rate, they are both authoritarians, and they're going to reroll their discipline dice, which should come in handy for repa uh, repairs. And then we've got a couple of fifth raiders. That's these little boys down here. They don't have any special abilities uh, per se. They didn't cost any extra points. Here's what they look like compared to that, that first raider. Uh, they do have one thing that you should be aware of, though, for today's battle. And that is that they are shallow draft vehicles. Because we're going to have a couple of shoals out there. Now, the shoals represent a little bit of terrain. If you sail into a shoal, you have to make a sailing test. Anybody that sails into it makes a sailing test. If they fail, they run aground, bang, 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 three anchor tokens drop right then and there. It's going to take them three turns to get off. These guys do not have to make those checks. They can just doot, doot, doot right across. These guys, if they start their turn on the shoal, likewise... We're going to be playing a little bit of a scenario. The Dutch are coming into the game with a total of 160 points. The British with 133. They're at a bit of a disadvantage, but that's because of the scenario. Let me show you. Look at this. We got a little bit of terrain today. How fancy is that? As you can see, at least those of you that can read, these are fog banks. The basic story is that a battle was interrupted because of the weather. The ships have made, they've found time to make repairs, but as the storm breaks and the fog clears, mostly, they find themselves intermixed. So we're going to roll for initiative, and whoever wins the initiative is going to get to put one ship, and they're going to alternate until all the ships are on the table. Black die, black sails. So the British get to go first, and he says, you know, I'm going to go ahead and put my ship of the line right there facing that way. And then the Dutch get to go, and he decides that he's going to drop his big ship of the line right there. They have to be a minimum of six inches apart. So that's about as close as you can get. Then the British get to drop their second ship, and they're going to drop that ship right here, six inches away. Uh, I think we could do better, actually. I think we're going to go ahead and put them like that. Is that six inches yeah. Now, oh, I should point out, the fog. If you're partially in the fog, you can only be targeted if, by ships that are within 12 inches. Normal long range is 18 inches. If you're partially in the fog, you can only be targeted by ships that are within 12. If you are fully in the fog bank, you can only be targeted by ships that are within 6 inches of you. That's how that rule works. And then we're going to go ahead and drop our boys. Now, we don't know which way the wind is blowing yet. So this could get rather awkward. Let's put this guy over... Mm, no, we're going to put our squadron. The Dutch have decided that they're perfectly happy over here. And then another six inches away. And, and remember, they ignore the shoals. These are the shallows. And it's the whole template. It's not just the painted area. It's that whole template that does it. And then we'll put this guy 
right about here in hot pursuit, let's call it. Is he six inches away? That's about six inches away. And now the question is, what direction is the wind blowing? Fortunately, good old Ryan, if you hear me talking to a mysterious guy named Ryan, that's the guy right there. He gives us an idea of which way the wind is blowing when things finally settle down. Hey, one last thing. At the end of every turn, I'm going to move those fog banks two inches the wind is going to push them around. So one of the other factors that the captains have to take into consideration is that there's a light breeze blowing those in the direction of the wind. As I said, uh, this is scenario, for, for those of you keeping score at home, the fog lifts. This is the scenario we're using. And as you can see, we've got a nice little chart here. A one through six. On a four, the wind blows from west to east. Well, that's obviously west, so it's going to be blowing that way. And we have a wonderful little Litco-based compass rose that we can put wherever we want to show that the wind is blowing from west to east. And with that, initiative goes to the British. Their flagship is going to get to roll three dice. And as you can see, with the wind from east to west, they are going to be in close hauled. So he rolls three dice. He's only going to get to move... On a five up, he gets one sailing point, and then he is a navigator, so he gets to reroll once. Still only gets one sailing point, and then this third raider down here has a sailing of four. He is going to be sailing at. He is actually reaching, so he sails on four ups. If you only get, if you don't get any sailing points, you automatically get a minimum of two. That's what this is all about. Let's go ahead and sail him the two inches. Gotta, you got to put the template at the back of your boat. And then you bring your boat up. And then you rotate him. What? I, I don't think we want to rotate him at all. I think we're going to rotate him just like a little bit like that, up to 30 degrees. Likewise, with this fella over here, he's only got the one sailing point. Um, so, but he can turn up to 90 degrees, that's where this comes in handy, he can sail up to here and he can spin 90 degrees, so he's presenting a broadside here, and now he's got the wind at his back, so he's in a little better shape than he was before, then we go over to movement four. Oh, let's not sail into the shoals, though. We're going we're gonna to cruise past this way a little bit. The flagship is going to get to move first. He is obviously uh, sailing directly into the wind at this point. That means he is in irons, so he's going to roll three dice. He's going to get no sixes. He does not get to move at all. The five dice up here are the sailing dice for the fourth raider, who is sailing... He is, uh, he's actually, is he reaching? Oh, look at that, he's reaching, that's fantastic. He's going to get to roll, and he's get to, going to get to move on the fours. So with those four successes, he's going to get to just book it. We'll bring him, put this back here, we'll bring him one, two, Three. He could actually, wow, he could actually close with and maybe even board this guy. How about that? Let's do that. We haven't done a whole lot of boarding actions yet. So we'll kind of bring him up to there, and then there's his third. And then his fourth is going to put him right there. He just doesn't. The last two ships we need to sail are these fifth raiders over here. And they are some slippery little devils. Boy, I tell you what. Where the rest of my dice go? Oh, there they are. They get a total of six sailing dice, and they are sailing to the west. Is going to put them. Oh, that's the wrong one. See, we have one for either side of the ship. Uh, as we put it like this, that's going to be running. I think. Put that in the center. Put this. Oh, you, you point this at the center mass, so they're going to be running. They are going to be sailing on fours. This guy is going to have a total of four sailing points. 
And this guy is going to have a total of just the one. That being the case, we'll go ahead and move him first. He's going to sail up. And then, hmm. And then he'll turn to point. This guy is also going to sail up and turn the 30 degrees. We'll bring him up again and turn him 30 degrees. Bring him two inches forward and then we'll bring him two more inches forward to there, which should put him out of this guy's, are they within six inches? He may want to stay close enough to this guy. Yeah, they're close enough to each other. They're going to be able to fire as a squadron. All of our movement is done, and we get to move on to the cannon phase. The first player fires the cannons of his fleet, then the second player follows suit. So the British are going to get to fire first. In addition to being used for movement, this little template will help you determine your fire arcs. You put it down parallel with the aft of the ship. The British still have initiative. He's going to fire. Because the center mast is outside, he does not have a shot over here. We spin it around and we look like this. He does not have a shot here either. He's in trouble. The good news is he does have a shot at this guy. He also has a shot at that ship, but we're going to do them one at a time. With a total of nine gunnery dice targeting this fifth raider, the fifth raider is just outside of six inches so why don't we go ahead and do this guy? He's, wait a minute, is that six inches there? Yeah, they're both outside of six inches. I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, and again, he does not have a shot at this guy. So the first raider is gonna take a shot at him with all nine, I'm sorry, second rate, all nine of his dice. Because he is at medium range, he's gonna hit on four up and he gets to reroll this six and add another hit. So that's one hit, Two hits for that die, three, four all together on this ship. So four hits versus a hull of two, and on every four up he's going to block one. So he manages to block one of the hits. He takes three damage, and that means he gets a damage token and an anchor token. Kablam. So here's our damage token and here's our anchor. The white puffs of smoke represent the fact that the flagship has let loose. Now this guy is going to open fire on this fifth raider. He only has a total of seven dice that he can shoot with, but he's a marksman, so he can re-roll any ones that come up. Remember, he's shooting at medium range, so that's going to be exploding on only the fours. Three Four damage, plus this if it's another four. Nope, another four damage. Rolling for the hull of two. He negates two of those. So he takes two damage. He is now shaken. He gets an anchor token. And if he had an anchor already, he would lose it. Uh, that's going to affect them on the next turn. And it's now time to return fire. These two ships are going to be able... Let's check that fire arc there. Oh, he didn't quite get... F well, center to center. I'm gonna... You should... I use the template. He is in the line of sight. If you crouch down and look from center mass to center mass. So both of these guys are going to get to combine fire as a squadron on this guy right here. So the... Dutch are combining fire. They're targeting the, the third raider. They only have a gunnery skill of three, but because there's two of them, they get to roll all six of these dice. They are going to be at a distance. You use the, the greatest distance, which means these three hits are all exploding dice. And they're going to get to re-roll. And they're hitting on four ups. None of those do. So that's a total of three hits on this guy. And he gets to roll seven for resistance. So three hits, resisting on fours. He doesn't take any damage. Nothing gets through. Oh, one thing I should point out. Because they were able to do... 
one, two, three hits all together? Is that what it was? No, it was a total of four damage. The White Fleet's morale goes down to 12. And that's it for the British firing. Now the Dutch, oh, I'm sorry, the Dutch have fired. Now he gets to take a shot. And his firing arc looks like this. So he does not have a shot here. He also does not have a shot there. So he unfortunately doesn't get to. But the fourth Raider, as you can see, does get to pop off at the, the British second rate. Fourth rate has a gunnery skill of five. He's going to roll. Fives are exploding, so he does a total of three damage on that first roll, plus an additional one. So four damage versus a hull of, wow, a hull of nine? Four damage. He's only going to block two of them. So the Black Fleet's morale goes down to 11, thanks to those two. The two damage means he's shaken. The ship gets an anchor token. And just like that, we are done with the first turn. As I warned you, the fog is now going to drift two inches to the west. That's the direction that the wind is currently blowing. And if any of the fog blows off the table, we're just going to leave it off for the rest of the game. It's not going to re-enter at all. Moving on to turn number two. I almost forgot. The white ships, the, the British had initiative in the first turn. We're going to re-roll. If they tie, the weather will change. The six means the white fleet now has the initiative. And the anchor tokens come into play. The first thing we're going to do is try to move this guy. We're still, the wind is still to the west. He is still... Running or reaching, either way, I don't think it matters. Um, if you are running, you cannot know it does matter. So we'll point that dead on at the center post. He is reaching. Okay, good. So he can make some turns if he wants to. He doesn't, though. He's going to roll all six of his sailing dice. Oh, he's damaged. We're going to have to deal with that, too. He's going to roll all six of his sailing dice. And on a four up, he gets to go. He's going to get three sailing points. And he's going to... Oh, no, I'm sorry. The anchor means he only gets one sailing point. He's going to be able to move up two inches, like so. And then he is done. Then he's going to make his discipline test to see if he can get rid of the damage token. All right, if you have any damage tokens, then your gunnery and your boarding are halved. Uh, I don't know why we have a, a token for both that. Uh, can you even see that in the light? Yeah. Um, you can put this down to remind me. Um, so he got away with a little something there. Not too worried about it. We're going to check his discipline. That fifth rate has a discipline of five. So he needs to roll five dice. If he gets any sixes, the damage token goes bye-bye. He has now recovered from the damage. That will come in handy here as he's just about to get rammed. He's stuck with the anchor token until next turn. On the other hand, his buddy over here, this other fifth raider, trying to keep up. He's got a sailing of six. He's going to roll, and he is going to get a total of four points. He's going to move his minimum of two inches, and then he's going to turn, and he's going to try to get out ahead of this guy. That's one to oh shoot he gets three points no 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 this is i got this wrong he's only gonna get three points so that's one two and then his third point is gonna take him to right here and then right he's only he's only moving on the sixes then he's gonna make his discipline check and if he gets any sixes which wow he's a pretty good roller now the anchor goes away so he's ready to run free. Let me move that anchor over here so I remember who it is. Uh, then this guy is going to go. He's the flagship. He's going to have a sailing of three. And he is in irons. But he doesn't have that damage token. So he can move two inches. And you better believe he's going to do that. And then he's going to turn. 
like so. He really wants to get out of irons, and I think that might do it. But we'll have to check on the next turn. Uh, I don't know that he's... He, he's kind of lining up for a spoiling shot down here. Then we've got this fourth raider who has a sailing of five. And uh, he is an off... It doesn't do him any good. He's an off authoritarian. He is straight up running, so he cannot tack or wear, which means he can't make any 90 degree turns. Oh, rut row raggy. Yeah, he wasn't paying attention, was he? Um, he's got to move his minimum two inches, which will put him here, and then he's going to turn the 30 degrees like so. That's for his first of his two sailing points, and then he's going to get to here, and oh boy. So we'll put that there. Now he's got to make a sailing check. He's got to roll five dice. He's got to get a six, or he runs aground. He does not. Oh, look at that. Go figure the Dutchman would be all ready to sail in shallow waters. I don't know much about. Now he's going to have to make another sailing check or run aground next turn, but he's in great shape so far. That is his second move, and he is now done. So we moved. We got to move this guy in. Oh, no, we've moved everybody. Now it's time for the British to move. And we're going to start with this little feller down here. That third raider has got a sailing of four. And uh, I don't know what that means. Which way, which way are you going this way, right? Wind is from the due west reaching. He gets two sailing points. So I'm going to remind myself. Two sailing points down here. And then the second rate flagship is going to roll three dice. And he's not going to get anything worth re-rolling. He only gets to move one time. So he will, and again, he is, what is he doing? He's running, so he's stuck with the 30 degrees, but that's all he needs. He's going to come up here and pivot like so, and that means he's going to be able to just unload on the Dutchman. That was a six, right? Okay, good. He's going to make his sailing check with all three of his dice. And with a six, oh, he's still in anchor. That's a problem because if you get shot again, you're much more likely to take a damage. We're not done moving. He's got the one sailing point, and it looks like he's going to be close enough to collide with this fifth raider like so. The two inches puts him right there. He has enough movement to bang into this ship. He can avoid becoming entangled and, and avoid the collision by rolling five. I don't understand. I need to read the rules way more closely. He is he wants to become entangled. He wants to perform a boarding action, so he's not going to do anything. This guy can avoid becoming entangled if he passes a sailing test by rolling all six dice. He is unable to, so this ship now bangs in like that, they are entangled, and we're going to be able to do a boarding action. Second question, is he going to be able to fire at this ship? We're moving into the cannon phase, after all, and that ship is out of his firing arc. They're both out of each other's firing arc. He can't do anything about it, so that's going to be a question for later, after we do all the firing for these three ships. Let's check firing arcs. Remember that it's the white team's fight. Uh, that's pretty close to right on the line. I'm going to give it a 50-50. And a 1-2-3, he can take the shot. So a 6, he's out of the firing arc. And we're just going to be trading volleys here to here. Oop. The white ships have the initiative. So this fourth raider is going to get to shoot first. He's only got four dice shooting at the black flagship. He gets it to, they are within six inches of each other. That means he's going to do two dice, two damage, gets to roll again, and those are going to be misses. He only does two damage. The, the flagship is going to get to roll, and he avoids all of the damage. So nothing doing there. Oh, by the way, this little collision here means both of those ships' fleets take one morale damage. The score is now 11 to the white, excuse me, 11 to the white to 10 to the black. And then does he have any shots he wants to take? 
No, he doesn't want to shoot into combat here. He probably could shoot. Does he have line of sight to there? Let's line it up. Center to center. Yeah, you know, I guess these guys could shoot at each other. So let's go ahead and take a shot over here. That's just two dice firing at that flagship. He's going to be missing big time. But the flagship, they're within 12 inches. So the flagship is going to roll all nine of his guns. Hitting on fours. No, hitting on fours, exploding on sixes. He does a total of three points of damage. No, he's firing at the dangerous guy. He does a total of one of four four points of damage. Three points plus another one. He does four points of damage to the fourth raider. That fourth raider is gonna try to dodge with four. He's gonna get two away. He takes two points of damage. That means he is shaken. He gets an anchor. And because of the two shots. The White Fleet morale goes down to nine. Now we get to do a boarding action. You better believe we're zooming in on this one. Boarding is a simple dice off. We're gonna roll four dice for the British, I'm, I'm from, sorry, for the Dutch ship with a boarding of four. They get one success. We are gonna roll seven dice for the British and if they can score two successes, they get their one, two. They have now captured that prize. The bad news is, because they successfully boarded, they're going to take damage in the ensuing melee. So we're going to drop this damage token down on the British ship. The good news is, this is a serious blow to the morale of the Dutch. The British morale is going to go up by two. The captured ship is removed from play. The skeleton crew aboard must focus all its effort on sailing for a friendly port. So they go bye-bye, and uh, I think because that ship is lost, the White Fleet is going to lose two points as well. So they're down to just seven, and just like that, the score is 12 points to the Black Fleet, seven to the White. This ends the turn. Our fog is going to move two inches. So there's two to there, point to point. Each of the sides, the square sides, are two inches on this handy little measuring tool. But thou and point to point, but thou. So just like that, the fog is drifting along, and we're going to roll for initiative. The black die, black sails. British maintain the initiative. There. Oh, you know, we forgot to do... Oh, no, that's at the end of the sailing phase. These guys, since they didn't tie, the wind is still from that direction... The third-rate ship is going to be running, so they can't make any 90-degree turns. He has four dice for his sailing. He's going to score points on a four-up. He's only going to get one set, and he'll do... He's going to move... Let's move him... Let's move him up to here. And then which way do we want to turn? I don't think we want to turn at all. I think that's good. And then we've got this guy who's going to roll three dice for his sailing. Navigator re-rolls both of those ones. And still doesn't get any points. He is in irons, so he can make a sailing check. And he didn't get any sixes, so he's just not going to be able to move. Then it's going to be the white ship. Let's find out what happens to that fourth raider. First things first, he's got a sailing of five. He's going to have to pass a sailing check or he's grounded. He fails his check, so he picks up two more anchor tokens. Ba -bow. And he can't move this turn, but he can make a sailing check to see if he gets rid of one of them, and he does. So he's stuck there for at least the next two turns. The good news is he's in good position to, to light that guy up. Then we're going to roll for the flagship who is close hauled now. So with the three dice that he's rolling, he scores points on a five or a six. He's actually going to have an opportunity here to cross somebody's T. He has to move up two inches, and then he's going to turn, and then he's going to move his other two inches, and, man, that's not looking good. Not only that, but he's got another ship over here 
that I think can, can help them out a little bit. Uh, it's going to be a ceiling of six for that fish raider. And with the wind, is he running or is he reaching? We're going to call it reaching, which is fine. He's going to be able to move up his two inches and then he's going to be able to... Oh, so we go... We'll put it back here. Oh! Forgot to roll his damage check. Uh, with the four dice, he fails his discipline. So he still has... His gunnery is halved. Uh, this guy is going to be able to move up and then make a 90 degree... Up to 90 degree turn. And his last point he's just going to move a little bit so he's right there and they are fixing to light him up i'll show you capture one of my friends will you um movement phase is done the british get to move first get to fire first and we'll start by firing we got a t crossed but we got to go with the short range over here. That guy is the much bigger threat. We're going to roll nine attack dice with our navigator. And at close range, all five of these hits are going to be potentially doubled. So five damage plus another, that's ten damage altogether. Against a fourth rate with a hull of four, ten minus two is eight points of damage. And this ship is sunk outright. It has a hull of four, which takes the white fleet down to a morale of three. That may be a problem. At the end of every, I think it's the end of every sailing phase, we're going to roll for this wreckage. And it'll disappear on a result of a six. But I don't think it's going to factor in because nobody's going to be dumb enough to go over there. Then the next thing we're going to do is roll for these two ships firing at that second rate. He gets to add his two dice to the flagship. So it's going to be a total of 11 dice in a single attack. And the sixes, this is bad. The explosion dice keep on rolling because they're crossing the T. Uh, so 11 dice hitting on fours. That's not a good roll. They only get two hits. But they get to re-roll those hits. So two. And only two damage altogether is really disappointing because they're shooting at a ship that has seven chances at four up. So two damage. Both of those are simply shrugged off. Now, he is... Uh, he doesn't have everybody in a line of sight, so he can't shoot. Is that the end of the turn? Almost. We got to move these fog banks here, 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 and the little one is almost off the off the board. If we have a tie, the initiative will pass to the Dutch. We do not, but initiative passes to the Dutch anyway, which is good because this guy was fixing to get boarded. He is going to start the festivities, and he is sailing close hauled still, so at a five, he's going to get two sailing points. He's going to use those sailing points. He has to move forward two inches. Oh, man. And then we'll turn him to 30. And then we'll move him another two, and we'll move him 30 again. So he's going to wind up a little something like that. Let's look at that a little closer, shall we? Then our fifth raider is... We lost two ships. Man, they're really, they're really not doing so hot, are they? Uh, the fifth raider is going to be running... On a one, two, three, he's reaching. He is running, so he's not going to be able to make any turns. He's got more than four sailing dice, though. He's got six altogether. Uh, he's got five sailing points, and 
that means he's going to have to try to sneak his way back into a position that he can fire. Um, this guy does not have a shot just yet. But ideally, he wants to be within six inches of this guy so that he can have a little fun. Uh, that's going to mean moving from here to here, turning 30 degrees. That's one, two, three, four, and five. Look at that. He's going to be crossing the T. So we're going to roll those dice separate. And then it is the British turn to go. Although the downside is he may wind up getting himself into a little bit of trouble because this guy now is running and he's got a sailing of four. Sailing on a five up, he's only going to be able to move two inches forward like so, which might be enough to open up a shot. But he is damaged, so his gunnery is at half. At least unless he can pass his discipline of six... So he does, so he is able to effect damage repairs, and then this guy is only going to be moving on sixes. Oh, look at that. He gets a pair of sixes. He's going to get to move to support. Much better result than he could have hoped for. Coming in hot from there, and then to there. And I think we'll turn, I think we'll turn just a little bit more this way. Love it. Uh, he does have the anchor. He's going to make a discipline check to see if he can do away with that. He's got a discipline of eight. Looking for any sixes. The anchor goes away. He's going to have a lot more flexibility next turn. So this ambush is not going well for the Dutch. At least the Dutch get to shoot first. And if we put this down there, he does not have a shot here, but he does have a shot there. And um, he doesn't have a shot there. So it's going to be two dice here. These are ultimate exploding dice. This explodes for one, two. See, you get to keep rolling three points when you cross the T. That's the advantage. Three points on one shot. Defending with a hull of seven, he's going to get uh, five defenses. So no damage there. And then this ship firing over here, that is beyond six inches. I should check just to be sure. Yep, just barely beyond six inches. So this big boy firing all nine of his shots, two, four, six, eight, nine. He's going to be hitting on four up, exploding on sixes. One, two, three, get to re-roll. So he's at two successes already, plus, oh, uh, Two, three, four, five, and then that four is a sixth hit against the flagship, who has a hull of nine. So six hits modified by one, two, three, four, five, six, and that's going to be no damage. The British now get their chance. He's going to be firing here with all nine of his shots and he's going to hit with one, two, three, four, five. Is he within six inches? Mast to mast. He's within six inches so it's going to be five plus the exploding dice. Five points all together. At least this guy's got a hole of two. He only blocks one. That's four damage. That is going to be enough to sink this vessel. We'll drop down another shipwreck, and that's going to reduce the Dutch morale clock to negative one. The battle is over. This flagship strikes his colors, says, yo, I've had enough. Let me uh, turn my sword over to you. I'm sorry I picked a fight with you in the rain. Let's do it again sometime. And that is Fighting Sail with Terrain. Thanks for watching. I'm praying for you.